Okay, I have my nut and my washer on there. When uh, you're putting something in like this, if you're precise with your layout, coming from the shoulder, this is 10 inches back, and they were the same. I, I drilled them all the same, 10 inches back all the way up. So when I put that rod in, it just slid right straight in. And uh, I put a block right here to just kind of catch that so that I could push it back up a little bit and get my, my washer my nut on there. But this is uh, being pretty precise with your layouts and drilling holes and everything. It just pays off when you go to finish out what you're doing with it. I'm going to snug these down pretty good. I don't want to over tighten them at this point. Okay, for right now, that's about as tight as I want to get that. And I'll take my saws off and I'll cut this off right here. Now I'll leave access to this, even after the roof is, is on. Uh, there won't be a rafter layout here, so I don't have to worry about that. That's one reason I scooted it out 10 inches, so I'd be sure and miss anything in the roof system. But I'll leave access to this, and as this top plate and all the logs below it begin to settle, I can tighten this up and keep them uh, snug together. I've started working out the half logs for the bottom that will go from girder to girder. This is the one for B wall. And I made that B, put the B where the flat spot is in the center. All I've got to do to this one is just hew it and it'll be ready to set. And I did the same thing on these, the bottom half logs that I did on the half logs that I did on the smokehouse. If you've watched that smokehouse series, I undercut from here back, this is the inside face of the log. It won't even be seen. It actually will be underneath the building. And this is the face that will be seen. And this is the edge that will actually touch um, the seal log. And so I undercut that and it makes it so much easier to get in there, especially when you're working by yourself. I'm not, I won't be touching anything here. And as I go in, it'll come out and this edge right here will be up against the seal log. I went ahead and drilled this for electrical, two feet in from the uh, inside face of the logs, the shoulder. I had to trim this just a little bit to uh, make it work. And I had to rip it down the middle, sort of in the middle. And I've got a piece left over here that I can uh, I can take my Alaskan mill and mill some pieces out of this, some two by sixes, or I can actually get some two by fours out of it. I'm not wasting anything. I've got some pieces on the ground here that I need to get picked up. With the price of lumber right now, I'm doing everything I can to save. These were actually just some timbers that I had left over. and I just ripped out some two by sixes and two by eights just to have. This is the bottom half log for D wall. I planed the inside, but I snapped a line where I need to rip it. And I've got quite a bit of checking here to deal with, but I'll be able to uh, cut right along that line and uh, have a nice piece to put in the bottom or on the bottom for the bottom half log just to, to fill everything in. Now these logs actually will never be seen because there will be a porch that goes around and actually will cover them up. They're basically a filler piece to go on the bottom. I'm going to use this uh, Ryobi circular saw to rip this. 
Um, I don't normally use this saw for ripping anything. I can use it for cross cuts going across the grain, but these logs that have seasoned quite a bit, so they're not near as green as they were uh, several months ago. So I can use it to uh, rip this. I don't like to rip with it too much because it throws so much sawdust. Now I have another one that's the same size, but it's the skill. Uh, thanks to my friend Lee, he brought it up to me. Um, and I'm not ready to break it out. I'll use it the first time on the rafters when I start cutting them. Now you don't have to have a saw like this. They're kind of pricey, but I've had this saw a good many years and I've used it quite a bit, but I'm gonna use it today and I'm gonna rip this uh, half log with it. Every little bit, I'll take some WD-40 and just spray that blade on both sides. And it kind of helps lubricate it just a little bit because that uh, does get a little bit hot. I've got a very slight bow right here in the middle, but I can, I can plane that down just a little bit and have that nice and straight. Okay, I'm now ready to uh, put these half logs in. And they're not really all that heavy, but it's, they're kind of awkward to try to pick up and set up there to get both ends at the same time. I put a, just a short board, clamped it to the, the pier right here with some slide bar clamps and I held the top edge of it up just a little bit I've got a little block of wood and my metal flashing there and I held this up just enough oh maybe an eighth of an inch probably so when I actually set the uh, the half log here I can just slide it in and let my clamps off and it'll just settle right down on top of that flashing there I've done that on both both sides and uh, it'll set on this girder, the very end of it. I've got uh, my metal here and my block of wood, the same thickness there. And I can just set it up here and just slide it right straight in. I was going to show you this contraption here that this log is sitting on. I call these my log wheels. Pretty handy at times. You can put a log on there and actually one person can roll it around it's just a couple of uh, wheelbarrow tires and wheels and it's sitting on a frame it's just uh, one inch square tubing with a, a three-quarter inch steel axle and it works really well you can uh, you can just wiggle right into tight places I've always had trouble on the light pieces with them actually sliding around on this frame and getting cockeyed so put a little clamp set up on here to keep it still and not be moving around. It's easier to push down on the, the light end than it is to try to pick up on the heavy end. And I can just roll this anywhere I need to go, uh, preferably on somewhat level ground, but I can push uphill just a little bit if it's not too much of a load. And I can just wiggle right in here. And just kind of seesaw back and forth. This works pretty good when you're, you're doing a lot of work by yourself, and which I do. Uh, I work by myself a lot. I'm going to set that right on top of that wedge. Take my clamps off here. And my block of wood. Go ahead and stand this up. And just pick it up and set it right on my my boards here. I hope that doesn't slide off. Mm -hmm. 
move this out of the way so I don't trip on it. I did not cut these real tight. I don't want to put any pressure on that seal log. I don't think that I would spread anything, but I don't want to take a chance on putting too much pressure on that, even though it's bolted down. I'm just letting this be actually just a little bit on the loose side. This actually is going to be covered up with the porch. I'm just uh, actually doing this as a filler but I will be able to anchor a porch ledger on that when I when I start that. Now I can just let the clamp off. It settles right down on top of that, uh, that, that flashing and, and the wood that's, the treated wood that's actually sitting on top of the concrete. I think I like that. Yeah, I like her that down from the inside uh, underneath the cabin with some torque screws and I'll run a couple down into that girder and that's got that filled in underneath. It's just a filler piece. A lot of cabins were built uh, and that was never put in or they would step down the foundation and put a, a, a notch in the foundation or lower, lower it down to where it would actually clear if they happened to do that where they would have a solid piece under there.